Good afternoon, everyone. Appreciate you being here, and we're starting pretty close on time. I do want to thank everyone for coming today uh, to show support for a very important issue facing uh, young people of this state and our country as a whole. Emergency departments treat an estimated 135,000 sports and recreation-related traumatic brain injuries, including concussions, among children ages 5 to 18 every year. On average, nearly 4,000 Ohio youth are treated in emergency departments each year, and the number continues to be on the rise. These are facts both Representative Sean O'Brien and I have found startling for our young student athletes. If a coach or parent is not properly educated on the symptoms of concussion or brain injury, it is likely the injury will go untreated. There has been a growing understanding about the impact that head trauma can have on, a young, on an athlete's long-term health, and there has been a groundswell of support all across the country to address athletic safety with a focus on education and prevention practices. Which brings us here today in our legislation. Our legislation uh, seeks to accomplish three key things. First, it's to educate athletes and their parents or guardians about concussions. Second, it's to remove an athlete who may have suffered concussion from play. And third, athletes are, not, are only allowed to return to play only after being cleared by a physician or athletic trainer. This legislation is similar to the rules that the Ohio High School Athletic Association has already on its books. However, unlike their rules, our legislation would also apply to coaches, parents, athletes participating in a youth sports organization, uh, and others that are not directly affiliated with the Ohio High School Athletic Association, club sports, cheerleading, ice hockey, for example. Uh, concussions and other brain injuries among our athletes has been an issue that has been receiving national attention recently primarily through the hard work of the National Football League in terms of championing this legislation. And I'm proud to say that my colleague and I are prepared to introduce legislation uh, in the form of a bill that will help uh, raise awareness, provide education, and ultimately serve as a long-term tool to prevent concussions and other brain injuries in young athletes in Ohio. I will now turn it over to Representative O'Brien and we're going to have a number of other advocates, also representatives from the National Football League, uh, to speak to, uh, this test, to this legislation as well. Again, thank you very much for coming here today. Uh, awareness is a pivotal component of this legislation. By educating coaches and parents on concussion symptoms, this will lead to better treatment and increase the likelihood of successful recovery. Nine states have already passed comprehension legislation dealing with concussions and youth sports, and several other states currently have legislation pending. With this bill, Ohio joins a national movement to ensure that our young athletes are adequately protected. No longer are medical guidelines just enough. Our state must have a uniform way in which to treat concussions and other brain injuries, not just among high school students, but for all our young athletes. And that is what this legislation intends to do. Now, before I turn it over to our uh, distinguished guests, I'd like to say thank you to the following people who really helped us and made this legislation uh, possible. Uh, first, uh, Mike McNichol, Jason Dapore, Holly Kozak, Bill Cotton, Natalie Wise, Marlon Williamson, Don Comstock, Keith Yates, Tom Palmery <coughs> and Robin Unger. I knew I was going to do that. Robin Ungerleiter. Uh, I'd really like to also say thank you to the NFL for taking a leadership position and really being spearheading uh, this legislation and helping us. And I would like to thank three women who've really been pivotal in helping us with this legislation. They are Suzanne Minich and Stephanie Ramsey of the Ohio Brain Injury Alliance and Dr. Kelsey Logan, Ohio State Medical Center. And as with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Logan. Good afternoon, everyone. It is with great happiness and hope that I'm here to help introduce this legislation. This has been the product of the fruit of, of much labor and collaboration through many organizations, including the Brain Injury Association of Ohio, um, the NFL, the American College of Sports Medicine, and of course, I want to say, say a special thanks to Dr. to Representative Stenziano and O'Brien, so thank you. Dr. Tom Best, who's president of the American College of Sports Medicine, would have liked to have been here uh, today for this, but was unable to attend, so I'm honored to speak on his behalf 
um, for OSU and for the ACSM about the critical issue of sports related concussion. The NFL, USA Football, the Brain Injury Association of America, and the American College of Sports Medicine, along with many other organizations, strongly support the adoption of laws to prevent traumatic brain injury in young athletes everywhere in all states. The Zachary Lystead Law, which many of you are familiar with, was passed in the state of Washington and it was the first modern concussion legislation. Since then, there have been many other laws passed and legislation pending in other states, and these all have uh, the elements of education, recognition and treatment of concussion at the forefront. Ohio's legislation is poised to improve upon that and to help in the lives of our young athletes. An estimated 400,000 high school athletes sustain concussions while participating in five major male sports and four major female sports during the 2005 to 2008 school years. 400,000, that's quite a large number. Moreover, the number of young athletes taken to emergency departments with sports-related concussions doubled during the 10 years between 1997 and 2007. However, a recent study shows that still 40% of athletes with concussions are returning to play much sooner than they're ready. And this is where we really want to help. We understand very clearly now that children and teenagers take longer to recover from concussions than adults. And we're also seeing some gender differences between girls and boys in recovery. The Zachary Lysett Law was the first concussion prevention law to pass. While no comprehensive and detailed assessment of that law as far as its effects have been done, there is early and anecdotal evidence that this is making a real, immediate, and positive impact on these young athletes. It's helping meet a critical goal for all concerned, preventing preventable brain injuries and making sports and recreational activities safer for our youth. So I thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I'm confident that Ohio is going to make a strong stand on this, the passage of a bill that will protect our young athletes engaged in sport and physical activity from the potentially devastating effects of concussion. Thanks. Next we'll have uh, Dr. Adam Barsh, the director of the Spine Research Laboratory with the Cleveland Clinic, who came down and is with us here today. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today on behalf of the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, I'm Adam Barch. I'm the director of the Cleveland Clinic Spine Research Laboratory and section head of head, neck, and spine injury research. Uh, this bill sponsored by Representatives uh, Stinziano and O'Brien is really a fantastic start to helping protect Ohio kids at risk of head injury due to concussion as well as sub-concussive impacts. Uh, though traumatic brain injury has become the signature injury of the 21st century, the scientific community still knows very little about concussion in adult athletes, uh, even less in kids. Additionally, the effects of thousands of subconcussive blows over a lifetime is unknown at this point in time. In order to determine the relationship between concussion, subconcussive impacts, and long-term brain health risks for children, we need a comprehensive concussion care plan. This bill will help with that. At the Cleveland Clinic, we are executing a long-term plan to help protect children, and a recently awarded NFL Charities Grant will help bolster that effort. In the near term, with the help of NFL Charities, Cleveland Clinic will be providing a standardized concussion care pathway for parents, players, coaches, officials, and administrators to follow. This care pathway includes an easy-to-understand concussion care recipe for use by coaches, players, officials, and administrators during practice and games. A set of standardized, youth-specific, sideline assessment criteria for use by school or organizational medical care professionals to evaluate each player the same way. A uniform post-concussion return-to-play pathway to ensure that each injured athlete has thorough, consistent, and appropriate medical attention before returning to the field. Additionally, for the NFL Charities uh, grant, we'll be studying young athletes and determining optimal helmet design parameters to protect kids in their developing skull, brain, spinal cord, and neck. We feel very strongly that kids cannot be simply treated as little adults uh, as they currently are treated uh, with scaled down adult helmets. Finally, we'll be collecting on-field head impact dosage via the intelligent mouth guard. <coughs> A mouth guard with tiny impact sensors embedded in plastic. These data will be correlated to concussion risk and through the data collected along the entire care pathway. 
Cleveland Clinic is very happy to see Representatives Stinziano and O'Brien moving swiftly to protect Ohio children at risk of head injury. And we're eager to continue to help solve the current concussion crisis in any way possible. Thank you. Part of why Representative O'Brien and I can move so swiftly is because of the hard work and the leadership of the National Football League. Uh, as you'll probably hear, they have gotten legislation in nine other states passed and are currently have a pending in, I believe, six others and will be the seventh. Uh, and to that end, I'm going to turn it over to Eric Ball, a former uh, player with Cincinnati Bengals, Kevin Mack, a former player with the Cleveland Browns, and Joe Brown, the senior advisor to the commissioner of the National Football League. Thank you very much for being here and their support on this legislation. I understand. Thank you. We, uh, I want to thank all of you for, for being here for what uh, the NFL considers to be uh, important legislation on a, on a crucial matter, and that's the uh, health and safety of, of young athletes uh, here in Ohio. Uh, on behalf of uh, Commissioner Goodell and the NFL, I want to thank uh, Representatives O'Brien and uh, Stinziano uh, for their leadership uh, on this issue. Uh, in the NFL, uh, we believe that we are changing the culture uh, on concussions uh, in terms of the National Football League. Uh, today's players and, and the coaches uh, know a great deal more about the symptoms and the dangers of concussions and head, another head injuries than when the two great players behind me uh, were playing. Uh, we continue to work very closely with our NFL medical committees, uh, with the military, and with other outside experts uh, to learn as much as we can uh, on this issue. Um, we realize, and, and I say this modestly, but I, we realize that colleges and high schools and youth sports groups look to us uh, for leadership uh, and often look to us to set an example. And that's true whether it's uh, uh, end zone celebrations in football or, or safe playing rules. Um, we understand that responsibility and on this concussion issue, we want to make participation fun and safe uh, for all athletes, no matter their gender or their age. Uh, as was mentioned by Representative O'Brien, uh, New Jersey uh, became the ninth state to sign substantive uh, legislation on this issue uh, back in December. And six other states have uh, had the legislation passed this session uh, out of one chamber or another. And it's actually uh, Representative Stenziali. Uh, Stenziali. The, the, uh, there are another 12 or 15 uh, states that uh, have this legislation in committee. So it's something that I think that when states realize that they're going to be without uh, this youth sports concussion legislation, they get on the bandwagon as well. Uh, Commissioner Goodell has committed publicly that we're going to help assist uh, 10 other states uh, pass the legislation in 2011. And as we've worked on this issue, uh, we realize that concussions are not just uh, a problem uh, in football, that youth athletes uh, in, in girls volleyball or girls basketball, uh, boys soccer and, and baseball, all need to be uh, educated and protected. And we believe that all young athletes uh, here in Ohio uh, will be protected once this legislation is introduced tomorrow and gets passed uh, hopefully this year. So with that, I'd like to ask Eric Ball, who's Director of Player Development, who's a great player, but now is in the front office uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals, ask Eric to speak, and then Kevin Mack, who many of you remember from the Cleveland Browns, a terrific running back, who's now Director of Alumni Relations for the Cleveland Browns. We got the two rivals <laughs> together uh, to, bond, to bond on this issue. So Eric, please. Thank you. Well, I'm pleased to represent the Bengals, Homer Mike Brown, and the entire Cincinnati Bengals organization here today. I want to thank the representative, representative Stenziano and O'Brien, who have sponsored this youth concussion bill. We believe that the eventual passage of this legislation will represent a victory for the parents, the teachers, coaches, and most importantly, every young person who is out there playing sports throughout the state of Ohio. 
I have been fortunate to be around sports almost my entire life. I grew up just up the road in Cleveland. I do admit that. <laughs> <laughs> Until I was eight. Uh, I know the values of sports and the lessons that they did teach me. I, almost, I also know the injuries are a part of sports. Uh, whether it's football, basketball, girls soccer, it's a part of the game. Uh, this type of legislation on sports concussions will go a long way prevent need, needless head injuries, sometimes perhaps even save someone's life, among all the young athletes that are participating in the sports. We at the Bengals pledge to do whatever we can to help the youth sports concussion legislation become law as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. Tell you what, I've played a video game and this probably is the most intimidated that I've ever been. <laughs> Standing up in front of the, this crowd here, uh, uh, pretty much any crowd. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm pleased to be here, uh, Jordan and Eric, uh, standing side by side with all the supporters uh, of this legislation. Uh, on behalf of uh, our Cleveland Browns and our Randy Runner, I'd like to thank all the legislators, uh, especially uh, Representative Stenziano and uh, O'Brien for introducing this bill and uh, helping protect our young people uh, who are just out having a good time trying to enjoy uh, you know, a lot of things that some of, the, some of, some of us older people have uh, uh, enjoyed growing up uh, in that sport. Um, I, think, uh, I think it's very important that we protect our youth. Uh, you know, that's our greatest asset we have in this country. Um, you know, as, uh, as an older guy, uh, having played for nine years in the NFL and having many injuries, uh, I think it's great. I think uh, a lot of people are, are benefiting from the things that uh, they've learned from when I played. It's totally different. Uh, one thing I, I noticed is, you know, I'm around those guys. Like Eric, I was in uh, player development uh, up until a year ago. So I got to interact with a lot of guys and see some of the medical treatments that they were getting, uh, and it's come a long way. So I think it's uh, very important that we continue and, and protect uh, the youth that, that we have, you know, as they get out and enjoy sports. Um, other than that, that's about it. <laughs> I think these guys have said it all before. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as Representative O'Brien mentioned, one group that's been integral has been the Brain Injury Association of Ohio. And so we're pleased to have with us uh, the President of the Board of Trustees, Stephanie Ramsey, uh, who's going to have some brief comments. Thank you, Representative Stenziano. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor to be able to speak for the Brain Injury Association of Ohio in support of this wonderful bill that you and Representative O'Brien are introducing. It's the aim of the Brain Injury Association to prevent uh, brain injury as much as possible and in those situations where it is not possible to prevent or the injury is taking place, to minimize the effect of that injury as much as possible. The provisions of this bill do a great deal toward applying those goals to the protection of our youth for whom sports activities are so important for growth and development. The necessity of taking such an action is em emphasized by some recent statistics that have been developed by the Ohio Department of Health and I see that the, uh, much of that information has been distributed so I won't uh, go over those numbers probably much to everyone's delight except to point out that over the seven-year period between 2002 and 2009, the uh, incidence of emergency room visits by youth of 18 years of age or younger accelerated by a factor of 111%. That's a huge increase and a frightening increase. So I think all of us would agree with the introduction of this legislation is particularly timely and particularly necessary. <clears throat> These injuries are truly life-changing for the youngsters who uh, encounter them. Uh, often 
requiring prolonged rehabilitation and profound challenges, not only for them, but for their families. And it is the experience of those athletes that speak far better than I ever could. In fact, one story uh, involves a young man who was to be a speaker here and join us today, who uh, played uh, soccer for uh, most of his uh, uh, young life. And he was 16 years of age, a sophomore in high school, playing soccer when he sustained a series of three serious concussions that involved <coughs> periods of unconsciousness and increasing periods of uh, loss of memory. As a result of those cumulative injuries, he suffered severe and lasting cognitive impairment, loss of memory, and the goals and aspirations that he had for future academic experience evaporated. Along with that, his family experienced profound changes. <clears throat> he was no longer able to keep up with academics in school, and his mother associated herself with a group, um, with a home caring group, and are right now trying to uh, help him to work toward a GED. Why he isn't here today is because uh, yesterday, midday, he suffered a severe crisis event which required that he uh, go to OSU's medical center where he stayed for most of the night and was released uh, in the wee small hours today. So our thoughts are with him, our thoughts are with his family as well. Uh, since he is not here, however, um, I know that he sends his support uh, as that of his family to this bill. But we do have another member of our association with us today who is prepared to tell her own story. So I'd like to introduce Sam Messer, who's here with her mother today, and have her give you a little personal account. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Sam Nasser and I just turned 21. On Saturday, July 10, 2004, when I was 14, my life changed forever. I was at a basketball camp at the University of North Carolina with my high school team and was an incoming freshman and was playing bas in a basketball game when I went for a rebound and got knocked down, landing head first, suffering severe whiplash and a severe concussion. That concussion was the end of sports for someone who had played all year round basketball and soccer since I was five, and ruined my chances at what seemed like a promising college future college scholarship. Little did I know that was just the beginning of a long journey, a journey to find the right doctors, the right diagnosis, and the right education. Meanwhile, I struggled with everyday things. I suffered from severe headaches, dizziness, exhaustion, and memory loss. I was started on many medications for pain and depression. I started physical therapy and speech therapy, and I have continued taking physical therapy even now with the same therapist I started with in 2005. I have been hospitalized many, many times with a lot of medical problems. I was finally diagnosed six months later with a traumatic brain injury. Over the years, I have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, a neurogenic bladder, bladder uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and chronic headaches, all because of suffering too many concussions and sports that finally led to a traumatic brain injury. When I went back to school for my freshman year, I couldn't stand the lights, noise, and smells, and was often sick from school. My grades slid as I became more depressed, and as friends left me because they couldn't understand my condition and thought I was faking it. I eventually left my school for an online school so I could work at my own pace, but I still couldn't keep it up. I, it wasn't until I found Buckeye Online School for Success two years ago that they got me an IEP and had me undergo testing to see where I was in my education. It turns out I was working at fourth and fifth grade level, so they put me in special education and I was finally able to do my work again and had to relearn a lot of school stuff. I am finally getting A's and B's again. I am work, currently working on my high school diploma, but only have a limited time to graduate before aging out of the system. I hope to graduate in February 2012. I have a lot more hope now because I'm being a service dog named Minus to help with my emotional and physical needs. I would like to thank my mom and dad, sister Danielle, 
brother-in-law Aaron, to cousin Katie, and friend Emily, who have, whom have stood by my side through this very challenging time. I am very lucky to have found Solis and a support group at the Brain Injury Association of Ohio, which has helped me in many ways. I hope my story can prevent this from happening to other young athletes.